Welcome back. In this section, we're going to be talking about surviving relationships during COVID-19 and beyond. The goal of this section is to teach you survivor strategies when locked in the same space with your abuser. And that is not only during COVID-19, as you will find out. Has COVID-19 showed up suddenly stripping away the safe haven your job or recreation sources provided? Have you awakened one morning suddenly finding yourself locked in the same space with your abuser? It is an unnerving and uneasy situation finding yourself trapped in the same space with someone who frequently exhibits symptoms including anger, control, jealousy, and even physically and sexually and emotionally abuses you. It makes you wonder when and if this prison sentence will ever end or when will the curfew be lifted. There is good news though. COVID-19 is not here to stay. But are there other times when you find yourself in the menacing presence of someone who should love you unconditionally, but instead abuses you mercilessly? If you think about it, COVID-19 is not the only time you are locked in with your abuser. If you are unemployed and your partner loses his job, the two of you, for the most part, will be in the same space you are locked in. It may sound weird, but you are also locked in with your abuser. If you are unemployed, then your partner stays home from work or is on sick leave. What about when both parties are not working and are together at home for what may seem like an eternity? What about the times after work? You go home and you're there with him or her until the next morning when it is time for work again. Then, there are those unending weekends. If your partner is controlling, you may be only allowed to go to work. You are locked in. When you are in the same space with your abuser, anxiety sets in and you become a nervous wreck. Just in case you did not realize your partner is an abuser, Take note of the signs. Any intimate partner who makes you feel uneasy, uncomfortable, nervous, and the list can go on, that person is abusing you. But before we go any further, let me make it plain. Your partner, whomever he or she is, is not the abuser. Yes, you heard me clearly. Your partner is not the abuser. While I knew that all along, it was a friend who reminded me of this fact, that Satan, the devil himself, is the abuser. He is the one who has infiltrated the heart and mind of your lover and causes him or her to exhibit hatred anger, control, and all those negative feelings against you. Domestic violence and abuse is demonic and it comes from the devil himself. I reiterated this point here to remind you, as mentioned in another section of this training, that sometimes you have to pray yourself out of these situations. You are no match for the devil. 
you should also pray for deliverance for your abuser. But you do it when you are safe, when you are at a safe distance. Do not stay in the relationship and jeopardize your safety to pray him or her through because the devil is not your friend. I cannot make this plainer. But with God's help, you are a mighty army against him. In the resources section, you will find information on a recommended book, Irrepressible Hope, Devotions to Anchor Your Soul and Boy Your Spirit. Multiple authors contributed to that devotional. Within that book, there is a story titled Stained Glass Redemption by Nicole Johnson. Reading it will help you to see your partner in a different light and you will be motivated to help him or her. Remember, you must do so from a safe distance if your relationship is toxic. In my book, River Never Smooth, Reclaiming Power After Abuse, I shared how I prayed my partner through. For the most part, abusers who are controlled by the devil cannot help themselves. These are broken people who are in dire need of help. So let's not turn our backs completely from them. We have a rewarding tool we can utilize. That tool is prayer. Alarmingly, statistics show that intimate partner violence, IPV, spikes during holidays such as Christmas, Thanksgiving, and others. Those are especially when families spend more time together. I have never been locked in with an abuser during a pandemic, but I have been in situations where I didn't want to go home. My job was my safe haven, so I know what I'm talking about. Were you ever in a situation where you are at work all day, you are happy and doing well, but when it is time to return home, you are sad and wish you didn't have to go home. Were you ever there? I've been there and at a few stages of my life. I remember utilizing split personalities for survival. In my book, River Never Smooth, Reclaiming Power After Abuse, I recapped my experience being home at nights, longing for the dawn of another day. My then husband and I were scarcely home together, but whenever we were, there were frequent quarrels and even fights over something or other. When he wasn't there, I recall looking nervously over my shoulders, wondering when will he get home and in what mood will he be? That kind of abuse tells on the body emotionally, psychologically, and even physically. You get sick. That situation started recurring in another relationship, but, but by then I knew how to use the blood of Jesus as a weapon. I recall at times my husband would come home and act as if I did him something wrong. He would be mad and start a noise for no reason. One night he walked into the bedroom and I could see he was possessed by another spirit. He looked as if he was ready for a war. And to my knowledge, I had done nothing to cause that. He asked a question that had I responded, it would have started an argument. Now looking back, I can say it was divine intervention of the Holy Spirit that said to me, plead the blood of Jesus. 
to his attack, I responded, the blood of Jesus against you. And I looked him dead in the eye. Immediately, I could see confusion all over his face. He responded, what did you say? The blood of Jesus against you. I repeated, stressing my words. He calmed right down and walked out of the bedroom. Not another word was spoken, and that was the last time he came home dressed in the demonic spirit of war. Following that, I would start pleading the blood of Jesus within my mind anytime he was around and even when it was near time for him to get home. No wonder he serves the Lord with me today. Yes, he does. God, I give you praise. Sometimes you need divine intervention to fight the battle of domestic violence and abuse because it is demonic. We do not know when this lockdown will end, but what we do know is that if we are in an abusive relationship, survival is the name of the game. And if you have family members who are in abusive relationships, then you are here to educate yourselves so you can help them stay alive and stay safe. It is said that when life throws you lemon, you must make lemonade. You're locked in, ain't no place to go. We are going to be making some lemonade. A nice glass of lemonade on a sunny day, it's so good, even on a cold day. However, and whenever that locked in situation presents itself, if you are in an abusive relationship with an intimate partner, the name of the game again is survival. Anything can happen at any time, so you must be prepared. To be prepared for instances like those, you need to educate yourself. I take this opportunity to appeal to family members. Since victims are seldom proactive in helping themselves, family members and friends need to equip themselves so they can help their loved ones to survive. And notice I said equip themselves. We all know that many things can go wrong and have gone wrong when people try to be peacemakers. Be sure to look for my next online course, which equips family members of victims of abuse on how to stay safe while supporting loved ones. We will break here. During the break, ask yourself if you are ever locked in, in a toxic relationship. If you are, start jotting down some of those times when you find yourself locked in. So you can see the seriousness of being locked in. In the next video, we will discuss some statistics prior to looking at survival strategies for when locked in. See you then.